welcome everyone to this Luminar presentation. We have Abba Shapiro, who is our expert trainer evangelist for Skylum Software. He's going to be taking you through Luminar. This is a beginning webinar, but if you've used it before or are an expert, I'm sure you'll pick up some tips along the way. So Abba, we're real excited to see what you have to show for us today. And everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you, Lori, and thank you everybody for joining us. Today, we're gonna just take you through the basics of Luminar. Uh, this month we're going to use portraits. I'm going to have some beach portraits that need fixing and just some shots that I took. And just to give you a sense of the workflow with Luminar, of course, this would work just as well with landscapes and architecture and vacation shots. But we're going to start here. This is an example, a very subtle example of before and after that we would work with Luminar. And then, uh, so this will be one of the images I'll be working with. And one of the other images I'll be working with, this beach shot that I have. Uh, where I'll just be doing some skin cleanup and some lighting correction and balancing. So we'll be working with those two images. So the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, launch Lumen. I'm going to launch an existing project. And if you notice in the right-hand corner of my screen, I have my images, but I also have this unique icon, and that is the Luminar icon. So this is actually a Luminar project file. And a Luminar project file, I'm going to go ahead and open this, and while it's opening, I'll talk about it. Uh, a Luminar project file encompasses your original image and all the work that you have done to get to uh, fix that image. So this is a finished product. I'm kind of showing you the end result first so you can see where we're going. And I can give you a little bit of a tour uh, that way. And then we're going to actually open up a fresh image and develop it from scratch. So what's interesting about a Luminar project file is I worked on this a couple months ago uh, when we just wanted to make you know some of the splash screens for the webinar. And I'm reopening this two months later, and there is something called a history drop-down menu, which is in the very top of the interface. And if I click on that, you'll notice I have every single filter that I applied, every single slider I used, every single look that I applied. It actually goes all the way back to the original image that I brought in. And that's one of the great things about Luminar is that when you save it as a project file, you still can go back at any point in time and pick up your work or go back at any point in time and see how you did something or maybe you wanted to modify something because you know, you look back and go, you know, I think I made that a little bit too gold or maybe I wanted the flowers to pop a little bit more. And that's one of the great features of Luminar and we will uh, revisit that later on in the webinar. But I just wanted to point that out. That's saving something as a Luminar project. Now, you can also save your images as an image that you can share. I'm going to go to the upper right-hand corner of the screen. There's a little icon that says share image. And if I click on that, there's an option to export an image. And that would be what I would use if I wanted to save a JPEG or a TIFF file or a PNG file. As a matter of fact, I'm going to click on that and show you the, uh, the end point here. Let me go ahead and make that nice and big. So I can save my projects as a JPEG, as a PNG, a TIFF file, even as a .psd file, a Photoshop document. And when you do save it, you'll have a lot of choices. So, you know, for instance, with the TIFF file, I can save that as an 8 or a 16-bit image. So I just wanted to, you know, clarify that there's two ways to save images. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. No need to save this now. But it does give me the opportunity to walk you through the interface on a finished project, and then we'll actually show you how everything works. So this is my image, and I went to the history. I brought it down to the original. But if you notice, I can go back up to any point in time. And I'm going to go all the way to the very top where I did my last edit because I want to point out that one of the nice things in the interface is I can very easily at any point in time see my original image as well as the image in its current state. And I would do that with two little buttons on the top of the interface. The top one on the left of the two, it's a small eyeball. It's the quick preview button. And if I click on that, I can see what the original looked like and what the current one looks like. As a matter of fact, I shot this golden hour, but it was just a little bit too golden for my taste. And as you can see, I was able to pull that back and uh, make the sky a little bit bluer just to make this a little bit more of a natural image. Next to that is the split screen option, and that's your compare button. And if I click on that, it allows me to actually 
look at my before and after uh, with a slider bar adjacent to each other. So that's one of the nice features of Luminar. Let me go ahead and turn that off and walk you through the three basic areas of the interface. Now, of course, we have our image in the center. On the top of the interface is the toolbar, and generally that allows you to, of course, we saw you can compare before and after, you can go back in your history, you can also zoom in as well as access some tools such as cropping and uh, free transform if you need to modify the shape of an image. And we also have the ability to erase things from an image and to do something called clone and stamp, where if I wanted to maybe add a tree to the background or if a race doesn't quite do what I want, I can actually copy and paste parts of the image onto another area of the image. Sometimes that's a really nice way to do skin cleanup. So that's the top of the interface and that's the toolbar. At the bottom are your user presets and this is where you have a variety of quick looks that you can apply. And so if I wanted to quickly change an image or stylize an image, I have a variety of looks. Now these are ones I created, it's my user preset. But if I click on the little categories button that is right above that film strip, I can look at the basic categories that are available to me when I install Luminar. So I could go to basic and as you can see there are things such as clarity boosters and image enhancers and as we go across the list you can read um, make things more vivid or fix the sky, make things classic black and white. So I can very quickly click on any of these presets and I'm going to go ahead and actually click on classic black and white just so you can see what happens. And what it does, it, it applies that specific set of filters to make this look to my image. And you'll also notice there is an amount slider. So if I like it the way it is, that's fine. I can export it or I can even dial it back and blend this classic black and white preset with uh, the original images that are below it. And so that's just that interface, and we'll talk about that in much more detail in about two or three minutes. To the right of the interface are my filters. So you'll notice that as I click on different presets, for instance, I'll click on Vivid, take a look at what happens on the right side of the screen. The filters that are used to create this update. So when I click on Vivid, Luminar will apply a develop filter, which is saving some of the highlights, adding a little contrast. As you can see, it's adding some saturation, a little bit too much for my taste. Polarizing filter that makes the sky nice and blue. So all the presets can be adjusted, if you look at the bottom, with an amount slider of how much it affects the image. But I also have full control with each of the presets where I can say I like everything it does, but I really don't like the saturation. So I can dial back just even one aspect of one filter in my interface. So that's an idea of uh, the different areas you have to work with. And I'm gonna go ahead and open a brand new image, the beach image, and we're gonna start working with that. And we'll develop that from scratch. So let me go ahead and close out of this. Uh, I don't need to necessarily save this because I was just demonstrating uh, what I was doing and that's my original image. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a uh, one of the beach images. I have this image right here. So what I want to do is I want to open this up straight from within Luminar. So I'll go ahead and launch Luminar. And when you launch Luminar this is the interface that you'll be presented with. And what's nice about this is uh, in addition to being able to open your images and work with them, you can also very quickly get to some of the other informational areas of the website that Lori will speak with you about at the end of the webinar, such as the user guide and where you can get more presets. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I want to uh, open an image. And I'm on my desktop and I can work with both JPEGs and RAW and actually basically everything that we saved, uh, you saw, Photoshop documents, PNG files, I can work with any of those files and as I said also raw files from all the different camera manufacturers and I'm going to go ahead and open up one of these images just so I can see this a little bit better. I'm going to switch my layout to actually see the images 
and let's go ahead and work with the one that we had on the webinar splash page. So I'm simply going to select that and open that up. And this image is pretty close. I I think, you know, it it's getting to where I want it to be, but I have some sensor dust here. I really want the ocean to pop and have a little more detail, maybe bring in a little bit more highlights to her face. So let's go ahead and look at how you might work with one of these images. The first thing you might want to do is just a quick fix, fix an image and, and jump out. So as you notice, we still have all of our presets available and these are the basic presets. So for instance, I can go ahead and click on Clarity Booster. And you'll notice that immediately the image is much better. What it did is it actually uh, tweaked the contrast a little bit, brought down the highlights, and this was the before and this was the after. So that was just a quick fix. There's also Image Enhancer. Now, I can click on these with my mouse. I can also, once I have one selected, just use my left and right arrows and step through to see if I like the look or the appearance of one over another. So if Image Enhancer doesn't work it for me, I'm just using the right arrow. There's Mild Image Enhancer, Vivid, which I think is too extreme, Sky Enhancer, which really doesn't affect her, but just the blue tones. There's our classic black and white. And just to give you an idea, again, of the slider, you know, I applied the classic black and white, but I can control that amount slider and blend it back with the original image. Now I have something that's more of a vintage look in my image, which is really kind of nice. I'm going to go ahead and bring that back to the right. So it's very easy to apply a quick preset. Maybe your image is dark and you just want to brighten it up. So stylistically, I can just go with one button and export this image out. And that's kind of nice. And as I indicated earlier, I can apply any preset. And if you notice, all the filters on the right get updated with the parameters of that preset. So maybe I like this, but I don't really like image radiance. I think it's making everything a little bit too soft. So I can either bring that down to see if I like it less, or I can also deactivate any individual filter simply by clicking on the small eyeball to the right of the filter's name. So if I wanted to see what this looked like without image radiance applied, I can simply click on that. The filter is still there, but it's deactivated. So I haven't lost anything if I change my mind and want to go back. So I can simply click on that, bring that back on again, and I'm in, in a nice place where I can work with this image. So that's an idea how you can use presets. And if you get a preset that you like, and I'm going to go up here and just maybe jump over to the portrait presets. And again, this ships with the application. And I'm going to just try a couple of these options. And if I like this, uh, it's pretty close. I just want to bring down some of my highlights. I can go ahead right now and export this image. I can click over here in the upper right hand corner as I showed you earlier, export that image, and then depending whether you're on a Mac or PC, uh, you'll have slightly different options here, but I can export this directly to any of the social media accounts that I might have without ever having to leave the application. So that is one of the nice features. So that's how you would work with presets and how you could modify an individual preset. What I want to do is start from scratch. So I want to go ahead and point out that history drop down. And as you can see, at even at this point, I can I've done a lot to this. It remembers everything. I can go right back to the original image that I brought in to the application. And now we're ready to start working with this image and starting to process it. The first thing I might want to do, just so I have visually what I like, and I can do this at any point, is I might go in here under Tools, and in the Tools drop-down menu there is a Crop option, and if you're a person who likes to use keyboard shortcuts, you can simply press the C key, and that will also get you into the Crop function. So there we go, we have our Cropping option, and when it comes in, you can just do a free crop if you want, there is the ability 
if you look in the upper left corner here, to lock the aspect ratio to what it was. And to the left of that, you see it says aspect and the word free. I can also choose a specific aspect ratio because perhaps I have to deliver something that's 16 by 9 because it's going to be put on a high definition television, or maybe I need to deliver an 8 by 10, or maybe I want to go with something square and I can go square, that'll be great for social media. And it's nice to be able to do your crop early because as you can see, if I chose this crop, I don't have to worry about that little piece of sensor dust later on. So sometimes I like to crop at the very beginning, other times I like to crop at the end. The nice thing about Luminar is that everything is live, so if I change my mind of my crop later on in the edit, I could go ahead and expand it. Let's stick with the free cropping here. We'll go free. I'm going to hit reset and I'm just going to tweak this in a little bit so that I don't have as much space to the right. Give me a better sense of the rule of thirds so that she's a little more focused in the image and I don't have that extra dead space. I'll hit the enter key or the return key and apply that. So now I'm ready to start processing the image and seeing what I want to do. So there's a couple of filters I want to talk about that are unique to Luminar. And to apply filters without having to go into any of the presets, to the right of the interface there is an Add Filters button. It's a blue button. And when I click that, it will reveal all of the filters that are available to you in Luminar. And one of the nice things about the application is that as I hover my mouse over any of these filters, it will give me a brief explanation of what that filter does and when you might want to use it. So there probably are filters there that you've never heard of because there are over 50 filters. And if you're not really sure what HSL is, which stands for hue, saturation, and luminance, it explains that to you and it allows you to do uh, very selective color correction. But that's one of the nice things about Luminar is that the interface uh, will kind of do some training for you. So let's go ahead and process this image. By the way, if you click on the image, it will bring you up to 100%. Click on it, it will bring back to fill the screen. And of course, if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can very easily scroll back and into specific areas to give you a lot of control. So I am just showing you that. And the first thing I want to work with is I want to just process the image so that I think the colors and lighting is balanced. Well, we have something called the Accent AI filter. And that's a great quick fix toning filter. It uses artificial intelligence and it analyzes your image and will apply a variety of just adjustments all with one slider. And I like the fact that if I start with this on an image, I can kind of get it halfway where I want to go. I'm going to bring this slider up. And if you notice, it's uh, the sky is getting a little more intense. The water is looking a little better. Uh, her skin tone's getting a little more saturated. And that's okay. I kind of like it, but I can dial that back. So I'm going to kind of boost my Accent AI to about, I don't know, 42%. That's an arbitrary amount. It looks good visually to me. And the other thing I may want to apply is a raw develop filter. And when I click on the raw develop filter, it will apply uh, this filter. And the raw develop filter, or in some cases it may just say develop filter, will always be applied at the very top of the stack. Now, the difference between seeing raw develop and develop is if it is a raw image from the camera, if it is an NEF file, uh, ARW file, um, any of the standard raw camera files, you'll see raw develop, which gives you a little more flexibility. And as a matter of fact, if you're shooting and your camera can shoot raw, I would recommend that because it gives you a lot more dynamic range and a lot more information to work with to better process your image. So the first thing I could do is I could change my white balance. I could do it as shot. It'll probably be pretty similar if I went to daylight. Uh, it actually kind of makes it a little more golden. And I actually think that's a little bit too much. And then I could also say, you know, cloudy. And these are all the camera settings that 
uh, you would have when you shot the image. So I could do that and it changes the color temperature, but let's go ahead and just leave that as shot. But what's more important to me is I want the background not to be as bright, but I don't necessarily want to darken her because she's properly balanced. If anything, I want to open up the shadows. So what I can do is I can go over here to highlights and bring my highlights down a little bit and that's going to give a lot more saturation uh, to the sky uh, and also my eye is not drawn to the sky because that's no longer the brightest area. And then I could also go over to shadows and open those up and as you can see it's lightening her skin. So that's a very quick way I could start to balance this image. And I kind of like where it's going, other than the fact that I have this little dot that's bothering me. So I can either wait till the end or fix that now. And I'm going to fix that now, just so that my eye is not distracted by it and I can focus on the image. So if I wanted to repair or erase something from an image, I would go back to the same area that we saw the crop tool. And instead of choosing crop, I'm going to simply choose erase. This will now launch the... Uh, erase part of the application is preparing the image. It's actually applying those filters that I worked with. And now I have a little brush and the brush I can use to simply paint over anything I want to erase. Now I can make this brush bigger and smaller uh, very easily. There's a size button here. If you have come from another application such as Photoshop or Lightroom, same keyboard shortcuts, the left and right bracket keys will make that brush bigger or smaller as needed. So those are two areas I want to erase. I've selected them and while I'm here just for fun, let's get rid of uh, some of this sand mess here and I'm going to click on the erase button and let it do its magic. And as you can see, those are now gone. Sometimes with clouds, it's a little tricky. And in that case, I probably would use clone and stamp. But I can go through and I can fix any problems I might have with an image. And if I wanted to maybe fix something, maybe there's an issue with her complexion, I could go ahead and say, oh, I'm going to make this into a poster. We want to get rid of this extra hole for the earring. I can go in and simply do erase that. I'm going to hold down my spacebar key. It lets me pan very easily with my mouse. And I can go through and I can start tweaking little areas that I might want to fix. Now, these are fairly small and I'm going to actually smooth out her skin using another filter. But I might as well erase that. And let's just zoom out a little bit to see if there's anything else that is going to be distracting in my image. I think we're pretty good here. So let's zoom all the way back out to fill the screen and I'm going to click on done and when I click on done it is going to erase those small little fixes that I did make which we can hardly see at this point. It's erasing and creating a brand new layer that I can work with of my erased image. And then once we have that done we could really start and polish this image, make this image work exactly how I like. So there's that fixed if I want to the right of that layer that it made. It made a brand new layer. There is a little uh, compare button. I can click on that. And as you can see, when I deactivated uh, the, the little things that annoyed me, that little piece of sensor dust disappears, as well as I uh, cleaned up the sand a little bit. So that's really nice. I have an immediate uh, feedback of how the image looks. So now I'm ready to do some more processing. And the nice thing about Luminar is I can add adjustment layers. And what adjustment layers allow me to do is keep all the modifications I've made to the image without accidentally modifying them. So I don't want to go back and accidentally change any of my luminance parameters or my sky parameters. I just want to start adjusting my image. And I can simply click on this Create Layer button, which is to the right. And I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. Now you'll see there's other layers that I can add. I can add a new image layer. So for instance, I could bring in a different sky and blend a different sky in with this shot. Or maybe I just want to overlay some texture if I'm going to make something that looks vintage and I want to put it on, say, worn paper. But we're going to create a new adjustment layer. 
And with this adjustment layer, I can now start working on different parts of this image. So I want to go back and add some filters. My basic developing is done. I've cleaned up my image. I've cropped my image. Now I want to do, you know, just some tweaks. I want my sky maybe to even be a little bluer. And I mentioned earlier the polarizing filter. This is great for bringing out the blue in skies. And as you can see, I can bring that out. So that punches that up, brings up the water a little bit. And I also want to be able to, you know, soften her skin, but maybe keep a lot of the detail on the, uh, the beach. So I'm going to bring in a couple of more filters, but I'm going to show you that I can mask and, and only apply what are called local corrections to specific areas. So we've seen global corrections, corrections which are applied to the entire image. But if I wanted to refine things, if I wanted to say work just on the skin, I can do that. And I can do that either on a filter by filter basis, or I can do it on a layer by layer basis. So let's go ahead and work on this just on a filter by filter basis. So I want to add some structure to this image. I'm going to click on structure and I'm going to move that slider to the right. And as you notice, as I bring that structure in, I'm getting to see a lot more crunchiness and detail in the sky and the ocean. Don't want a lot of it, but I do like a little bit of the way it brings up some of the highlights. But what I don't want is I don't want that structure to start affecting her skin tone. I brought this all the way to the right. And this is where being able to paint things in or mask things really come into play. As a matter of fact, once I bring my structure way up, look at that. I've just noticed a couple of more sensor spots. That's the, uh, if I can give photographers out there a recommendation, if you're at the beach, don't change lenses because that's when you get your sensor nice and dirty and I did exactly that. I changed my lenses and I got some sensor dust. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring down the amount of that structure just to give a little bit of crunchiness. But again, I don't want it to affect her skin. So what I can do is next to that eyeball is a small paintbrush. And if I click on that paintbrush, it allows me to paint in that filter on part of my image or erase it on part of my image. So I'm going to click the little paintbrush and I'll click on the word brush. It now turns kind of a gold orange. And my top toolbar has changed. It is now, the uh, shows me that I can paint or erase my filter in. So I'm gonna paint the filter in just on the water, this white part here, just to give it a little bit of more detail. And you'll notice as I paint this in, the rest of my image is no longer affected by that structure filter. So I'm just really painting it in to the water here and a little bit of detail on the sand. Just kind of bring up and it gives the feeling of things being sharp. If I wanted to, I could zoom in and also bring in a little bit more detail into the swimsuit so that I want to make sure that, you know, we have some nice sharp lines. This could be for a, uh, a swimsuit company and they really want their product to be, uh, you know, to pop out, to stand out. So we've done that. And let's go ahead, bring that back down. And I can see exactly where I've painted. If I look in the upper left-hand corner where it says mask and there's a little eyeball, I click on that and it shows me exactly where I've painted in my detail. And the nice thing about this brush is again, I can change its size with the left and right bracket. Shift left and right bracket will change its softness. So sometimes you want a harder brush or a softer brush, but this way I can see exactly where I've painted, and all I did was click on that little eyeball. And again, if I go ahead and move this structure slider hard to the right, you should be able to see that I have just in this area, and if I toggle it on and off, detail added to the water. So I turned it off and turned it back on again. There we go, there's off and on. So we have a nice detail or structure going on there but I'll bring that down. Now I'm gonna do the flip for the skin and this is showing you a couple of things. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add another structure. And this is a cool thing about Luminar. I can add multiple versions of the same filter to the same adjustment layer. So in the first case where I wanted to be able to focus on 
making areas sharp. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to start softening. I'm going to bring this all the way down. You see it softened the whole image, but that's okay. We're going to play with that a little bit. And what I really want to do is I just want to go in and I just want to smooth out the skin a little bit. So I can go ahead and if I wanted to, I'm going to just paint in. Let me make my brush a little bit bigger. And when I start painting in that softness on the skin, you'll notice, and let me zoom out a little bit so you can uh, see what's happening. It's only adding the softness to the skin area. And I'm going to do this in a pretty broad sense just because, you know, we only have an hour, so this will be a little bit sloppy. If I turn on my overlay, you can see, oh, that's, this is a great thing. I created that area here but I forgot to switch to being active. So we'll go right to that history, go back to where I brought in that structure softness. There we go. So there we have the hard, uh, sharp stuff. And now if I go down here and click on this structure, there we go, we add our brush. Now I can start painting on the skin. So let me go ahead, we're gonna paint. I paint on the skin area. And you'll notice as soon as I started painting, everything else got sharp. So I'm only painting in the softness onto the skin tone area, which is kind of nice. So we just do that. And if I zoom in a little bit to her face, I can make sure that I paint this in. And what I want to point out is what's really nice is I'm going to do a really broad brush here. And it softens the skin, and I'm actually over softening, but I'm going to pull that back just so I can see what I'm doing. But as soon as I put that overlay mask on, I can see where, for instance, I softened where the eyes are. So instead of painting, I can go up here and switch from paint to erase and make sure that, you know, I don't soften the eyes and the nose. Let me go ahead and turn this off and make sure. So I don't want to soften the eyelashes because that's going to make the image look soft. And I don't want to necessarily soften the lips. I just really want to work with uh, the skin. So if you'll notice, I've erased this. We can now see those areas. And if I bring this back to full screen, I can go and see maybe where I've overpainted or maybe need to add some stuff. So let's say that's the softness that I want. I'm going to turn off the overlay. I'm going to go to the right side and turn off my brush. And now, when I zoom in and pan over, I can play with that structure slider for the softness of the skin and pull it back to where it's softer, but I still see some texture so it looks more natural. And that's one of the nice features is everything is live. Everything can be modified. I'm never locked in at any point. So I can go ahead and I can tweak that. And if I wanted to go back and remove maybe a little bit of a blemish, but you know something? I like leaving some texture and an occasional blemish because that way it doesn't look over-processed. It doesn't look like a porcelain doll. So that's an example of where I might use very specific or local adjustments. Another example of where I might use local adjustments is maybe I want to bring uh, more light onto her face. You know, I, I had, I think, a flash going off from the right, but we really didn't get enough light onto her face. So I could go ahead and add yet another filter, and I'm going to go down, and the nice thing about how the filters are organized is they're grouped into the way you might use them. You have your essential filters to do your basic things, such as color and developing, converting to black and white, and of course your AI filter. Uh, you have toning, which is a really, actually nice filter, as a matter of fact. I'm going to go ahead and launch the toning filter because it had a really unique slider here. You have sliders that you may be familiar with from other applications or from even the develop module. So highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. But there's one called smart toning. And what I like about that is that if I move it from the middle to the left, it'll darken my highlights but not affect my shadows. So I can easily bring down the highlights but I'm not crunching and losing detail in her hair. Conversely, if I moved it from the middle, and I'm just gonna double click it, it resets it back to its default. If I move it from the middle to the right, it'll open up the shadows. Look, it's opening up her skin tone, but not really affecting the sky. So I could also do that to brighten up the skin. So that's kind of a nice little feature. So I like that, I'm gonna open that up a little bit. 
but I still want to be able to focus more light on her face. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom. There's a bunch of utility filters and I'm going to just do a simple brightness and contrast. So I'll click on that, open up the brightness and you see it's the rest of the image is getting too bright, but I'm just looking at her face. And once I get the face to about the luminance value I like, add a little bit of contrast just to make sure that it's nice and uh, my blacks are rich. There we go. So this is the before and the after, subtle, but I'm really focusing on her face. And I can simply go in here, grab that brush, click on the brush, go right to the face and just paint this filter onto her face and just lighten up the face. So this is the area that I'm working on. I kind of did a little bit uh, sloppy here. I'm going to clean up the edge so we don't have that. And all I did was hit the uh, X key and I can erase. I could go back. So I'm just focusing on the face. If I want to see exactly where that is hitting, I can click that on, erase that little bit, and zoom in just enough that I can make sure I get the nose there. Here we go. Oh, that's the minus key. See? Live demonstration. I'm hitting all the buttons I can. Okay, now I'm painting it in. And what I did, by the way, was I hit the X key and that switched me from a race to paint. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And now her face is brighter, but the rest of the image isn't. And that my eye is now drawn to that area. So I like that. Let's take a look at the before and after here. This was our original image. This is what we're working with. Probably a little bit too bright there. I can dial that down on the cheek. But I like where this is going. So at this point, I could be done with my image, but I'm ready to play around and stylize it a little bit. So I'm going to add another adjustment layer because everything I have here I like, but I want to kind of give it something extra. So I'm going to hit the plus key, add a new adjustment layer. And now I'm going to go around and I'm going to try some of these presets, the portrait presets. So I could look at enhanced portrait to see if I like it. And what that's done is it's done some toning. It's actually put a vignette on this and did a little bit of detail enhancement. I do think the color is a little bit off. Uh, it's a little yellow, so I'm going to take what's done with this filter and add a couple of things to it. The first thing I want to do is I want to scroll all the way to the top and open up my saturation and vibrance filter. I'll click on that, and you'll see that it puts that at the bottom of the list. If for some reason I wanted that to be uh, happen earlier on in the workflow, I can simply grab it and move it up, and usually I like to have my vignette at the very end. And now I can bring down the saturation, which I actually like her skin tone better. But there's two things here. There's saturation and there's vibrance. Saturation will globally make everything desaturated or supersaturated equally. What vibrance does is it looks at the lesser saturated areas. And if you move it to the right, saturates the lesser saturated areas first. And if something's already very saturated, it'll leave it alone. And of course, if you move it to the left, it's the opposite. So I'm bringing down my saturation a lot, but I'm going ahead and I'm bringing up the vibrance a little bit. And this really changes the look and feel of this image for me. I really like it much better. It's more natural. This is with it turned off. This is with it turned on. And I like the fact that it does a nice job uh, fixing her skin. So we have that. So I, I like that a lot. Another filter that I like to work with, especially when I'm doing portraits, is under Creative. There are some great filters that come bundled with the application. One that is really nice when you're working with uh, skin tone is there is one called High Key. And this kind of is what you see in a lot in magazines. It, it kind of brightens up that skin tone bright area. We'll bring that in. And it opens that up a little bit, but when you do add high key, it tends to pull out some of the vibrance. So then I'll add a little saturation back in. So this is giving that skin tone, you know, a little bit nicer play. And there I can go ahead and turn that off. And you'll see it'll process and turn it on. And it's subtle. I don't know if that's coming across really that well uh, on the webinar. I'm going to do it a little bit more uh, extreme. 
And then I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to simply grab that paintbrush and I will turn that paintbrush on and just paint in. I'm going to make a nice big broad brush and just make sure that the high key parts really, you know, focus mostly on her skin tone so I don't lose any of that wonderful saturation and background that I worked on. But this is going to give her that nice kind of magazine look that you're used to seeing and the backgrounds uh, well controlled. So that's pretty good. I'm kind of happy with the way that looks. I'm going to show you how we can save this and then we'll go and we'll answer some questions. So, you know, it's been recording my history the whole time. And by the way, uh, I can easily go to the drop down menu and jump to any point in time. But if I just wanted to go back one step, there is an undo button. The keyboard shortcut is the same keyboard shortcut you'd use on your PC or your Mac. On a PC, it's Control Z or Control Z. And on a Mac, it's Command Z or Command Z. So I don't necessarily have to use my history panel to go back in time. So let's go ahead and show you how you can save your project file. So under File, I'm simply going to go Save. We'll make sure that we're on our desktop. And now I can save it and I have a couple of choices. And this is a little different between Mac and PCs. On a Mac, and these are the defaults, a save original resources checked and save history is checked. So what's going to happen when you save this Luminar project file? It will save a copy of your original piece of media within the project file and all that history. And you want these checked. Uh, this way you can open it up at any point through any machine and you'll never see original media not found. Okay. Now there's also a button that says Windows compatible. And so if you're on a Mac and you know you're going to be going back and forth between a Mac and a PC, you'll want to click on Windows compatible. And that way if you move the file across, the Windows operating system will recognize it. And the reason we have this is because obviously the Mac operating system and the Windows operating systems are a little different. Uh, the files will work exactly the same, but we just have to tell Windows that it is not a folder, which is the way a Mac saves its file. If you're on a PC, life's a lot easier. You don't have to make any choices. It automatically saves it in a way that uh, can be opened on a Mac. So just if you're moving things back and forth, it's one thing you might want to uh, adjust. But if you're staying on one platform, no need to worry about that. And then I would simply hit Save, and it would save. The other thing I could do is I could go ahead and export this. I showed you that earlier. I can do that from the upper right side. I can also do that from the file menu and go to export. Again, clear that up. And what I want to do is choose the format. And I'm going to go ahead and save this as a JPEG. I can choose how compressed I want it to be. I can even change the size. I can say, you know what, I just want this to be 2,000 pixels wide because I want to post it to Facebook and I don't need a real big one. Or I could actually change the dimensions. And then I would simply hit save and it would save it as a file that I could hand off to people. So that's just a general idea of how the application works. This was our finished image. This was our original image. It's subtle, but this is much more of what I envisioned when I shot it as opposed to what came out of the camera. So with that, I'm going to throw it back to Lori to see if there are questions. Yes, indeed. We have a couple questions. Uh, one, Kevin was asking, he actually uses Aurora, uh, and then he wants to go into Luminar. So I was wondering if maybe he could show us that open in or open with. So uh, right he's starting in Aurora, and then he wants to go to Luminar? Yeah, but in this case, maybe we could show him going from Luminar to Aurora. Sure. Well, we can go both ways. And as a matter of fact, I, I do that a lot. So I can, in my upper right hand the corner, there's the open in option. And so you can open it in, in any of the other applications. As a matter of fact, I could send it to Photoshop if I need to. But if I want to send it to Aurora, I could go ahead and click open in Aurora. And we'll do that. Now, I didn't officially save this, so we'll see what happens. Give it a, and so what it's doing now is processing this image and it will then open it into Aurora and I can work with the image that way. I like to actually open up a lot of my images in Aurora. As a matter of fact, Aurora uh, 
HDR 2019 was recently released with a whole new engine underneath. And I like opening up my images first there because it allows me to really draw out a lot of detail in my highlights and in my shadows. So here we go. It says an HDR image will be made from this. Let's go ahead and say create. It's going to, I I did that quickly. There was a little button that said tone mapping that I left checked. Might be a little bit strong uh, on her skin, but let's see what the newly opened image will look like. So this was the before that I brought in. As you can see, it brought in a lot more details. And actually, that's kind of, I kind of like what it did. Um, it actually made things pop a little bit more, but if I wanted to focus on some areas or if I think that it's a little bit too strong in the skin, I could go over here to that same type of brush that we had before, click on brush, and now what I want to do is instead of painting, I'm going to go ahead and erase and just, you know, make sure that we don't bring in too much extra detail on her skin. And then I can start working with any of these filters, polarizing, maybe bring the sky up a little bit more. And of course, many of the same filters are here, but there are some definitely some new ones, such as HDR structure. There is a, uh, um, you can control the structure a little bit, and then under HDR details boost. So you can see there's a lot more in fine tune controlling of your image. So that's how you would go from Luminar to Aurora. And by the way, if you're in Aurora, and you start that way, you could do the same thing, open in, and I could send it to Luminar. So it's you have that nice ability to jump straight from one application into another application. Thank you for showing us that. Uh, there's another question. Um, this gentleman downloaded a free workspace uh, from our website, but I was wondering if maybe you could just quickly go over workspaces oh, and how absolutely, how Absolutely. As a matter of fact, um, let me go ahead and I'm going to add an adjustment layer so we have a clean slate here. You can do this also when you first open your image. Uh, you know, you open it up and you'll see there's no filters there. It always comes in with no filters until you either hit a preset or apply one. But if I click where it says clear workspace, I get a drop down. And there are some workspaces that come bundled with it, as well as some that you can install from other folks from our website and even build your own. But what happens is when I click on any of these, so for instance, I click on Quick and Awesome. What it does is, unlike a preset, it applies the filters that I might want to use for making this image awesome quickly. That's why it's called Quick and Awesome. But all of the sliders are set to neutral or zero. So what it does is it very quickly brings in the sliders I might want to work with, do a little AI boost, do a little fix of saturation, add a little clarity, and I'm good to go. So that's what the ability to have workspaces do, does. Maybe, for instance, I just want to do, go ahead, I'm working on a portrait. I'll click on that. And you'll notice now it gives you the filters that you would use probably to develop a portrait. So that's nice with these workspace presets. I'm going to go ahead and clear that just for a moment, clear the workspace. But I might want to make one that I use just for the beach. So maybe I'll add Accent AI. I might use a little tone, probably the Develop filter, Saturation and Vibrance, and Polarizer. Okay, I love starting off with these, and this is going to be my beach one. And all I have to do is go up to that custom workspace where it says custom now, and save that as my own workspace. Save as a new workspace, ABBA Beach. Okay, save as a new workspace. Now, every time I open a beach shot, I can go here to that drop down and just when I click on beach, look, I've actually done this before. I'm going to click on that one. And there's all the filters that I use when I develop something at the beach. And obviously, I did one called top and bottom lighting. There we go. I can bring down the top, uh, the bottom. I can even set the orientation so it happens where I want. And here's the cool thing I like what it's done. Don't want to darken her face, so I simply go in, click on that brush. Instead of painting, I hit erase, and I'm just going to erase out so that I don't have that top and bottom lighting affect her in the image. So that's an example of workspaces and creating custom workspaces. Fantastic. 
Okay, I think, Abba, what I'm going to do is take control of the screen here in just a second so that we can show folks where to find some more information. So we'll go ahead and do that. This is Skylum.com. Okay, we're making a few changes to our website, but for now, let me show you what we have available for you. Uh, since we're talking about Luminar, if you go to Skylum.com, you'll see a drop-down menu for Luminar. Here's some more information where you can find Luminar. You can even do a free trial, get upgrades, etc. Uh, where Abba and I reside is in the education section. So we're going to show you here under learn more. If you click on education, you're going to see lots of different tutorials. And we go over everything uh, from filters, presets to photography related things. So take a look at some of these. Uh, they might uh, be able to answer some of your questions or inspire you to try out something new. Uh, we also have a user guide and I'd highly recommend uh, you folks to take a look at the user guide. We have it for both Mac and Windows, but there's everything you ever wanted to know about Luminar in here. So if you have any questions, go ahead and jump in here, see if it can answer. If you need to email the support team, the email address is support at skylum.com. They're very helpful and should be able to answer any of your questions there. And just a couple more things for you to see here. Um, there's some FAQs, so if there's frequently asked questions, you can take a look there. But I also wanted to show you the marketplace. So if you click under marketplace, you'll be able to see a bunch of presets that you can download. There's also signature presets um, that we charge for those. They're pretty intense. <laughs> you get a great uh, selection of those. But if you want to just try out some for right now, you can just click on free. Uh, there's some free ones, or you can pay for a few of them. But it's really easy to download. You just you know click on learn more. There's some befores and afters. Just click on download and double click wherever you, you when you get into your download folder and you see a little zip file, just double click on it. It automatically installs into Luminar and the category section that Abba just recently showed you, you'll be able to see those user presets. So that's a really nice feature to have there as well. Okay, I think that about does it. Uh, Abba, you wanna have any last uh, goodbyes, any last uh, thank yous there for everyone? Well, I just want to thank everybody for joining us. And if you haven't downloaded the trial, download the trial and feel free to test out some of the skills that you hopefully have learned today. And thank you again for joining us. Yes, thank you so much, everyone. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.